So in the previous tutorial, we created a simple project and we went through the stages of accessing the Django admin and doing some basic overrides. So in this tutorial, we're now going to take that one step further and set up our own custom admin site. So we're going to go through your three steps here. We're going to set up a custom admin site, just go through that process, and then have a look at overriding the default admin site and then go ahead and set up multiple admin areas. So our initial application had two app, we created two apps, a blog app and a bookstore app here inside of this project. So we're gonna create different admin areas for the blog and the bookstore. So our first task then is to create a, an admin area for our blog. So we are essentially going to now override the initial or the existing admin area by creating a new admin area for the blog. So let's go ahead and access this. So the code is in the description if you just wanna start from this tutorial. Otherwise you can quickly build an application here. You can see we've got two apps. We've just uh, assigned that or we just registered, that, registered the applications in the core settings. That's all we've done there if you wanna catch up. So we're in the blog. We're gonna to go to admin. So first of all, we basically and give ourselves access to the admin uh, classes and attributes, etc., from the Django contrib. So next thing we need to do is create a or build a new class. So we're going to start off by calling this class, for example, blog uh, admin area. That seems suitable in this case. And then we just need to extend from admin and include the admin site. So here what we can do now is just create some simple overrides. So we've got a few options here, site header, site title, site URL, etc. So let's just, uh, for example, add in a site header. And this is just going to change the name of our admin area. So let's just call this the blog admin area. So if you're following from the first tutorial, and notice in the URLs of our core, we added some simple overrides. So I've just commented in those out for now. So let's go ahead now and just to reference this. So uh, let's reference this by uh, blog site uh, equals, and then we'll call this blog admin area. And then that's going to then have a name. So let's just call this blog admin. Okay, so that's now registered. So we now can go ahead and have a look in our URLs. So let's uh, go into our URLs of our, of our core application in this case. And first of all, let's just kind of bring that in. So we're in blog. Now we have registered blog in settings. Uh, so that's available and we can access it now. So from blog admin. So we want to go into the blog and then into kind of the admin file. So blog.admin. And then from there, we want to import. So what we want to import is if we go back into our admin area, we want to import, in this case, a blog site. So we're going to import that variable, which is obviously holding um, this class. So Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to call this blog site. I should have called it blog admin site, maybe. That probably been a little bit um, more descriptive there. So we've gone ahead and done that. So now we can then uh, change this path to the admin because we no longer want to use the, the default admin site, right? Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've called this um, blog site dot URLs. Okay. So now let's just go ahead and go to our admin area. Let's just log out, go to the home. And now you can clearly see it says blog admin area. So when I type in admin admin, it now says you don't have permissions to view or edit anything. <laughs> okay, 
So we've got this site administration now for our blog admin. You can see it's kind of uh, completely clear. It doesn't include all the other options that we saw previously. Remember, um, by default, when we created a migration, there were a few tables that are created. So this is completely blank slate. So what we've done there is basically created an admin area, blank admin area for our blog. So to see this working, I guess what we should do is just create a simple model in our blog. So I've gone ahead in our blog, in the models here, you can see that I've just created a very simple uh, model. All it has is a title. That's pretty much all we're going to use. And then you can see it's going to return the, the title name. So I'm just going to stop my server, control and C. Uh, let's go ahead and um, make migration so that we can just migrate this uh, model to the database. There we go. So we've uh, migrated that table now to the database. So now we've done that, we can now go ahead, go back into our admin area of our blog and we can go ahead and register our model. So I've imported the models in to the admin so we have access to the models. Now, normally we might type in admin.site.registermodels.post and that will then register your, module, your model onto the admin area so then you can uh, interact with your database from the admin area. But of course, we're not really using admin site anymore. We're using, uh, in this case, blog site. So let's go ahead and type in blog site dot register and then your model. So let's go ahead and have a look at that and refresh. And you can now see we have in our blog admin custom area, we have access to our posts. So if you're not new, or sorry, if you are new to the admin area, of course, what we can do now is actually add data to our, our database. So just got this title one, and we can now go ahead and, for example, save something to our database. So what we have now, as you can see, is a, an additional kind of admin area. So we can still actually access the original admin area if we wanted to. Um, so let's just go ahead just very quickly and just change this URL. So we go back into the, the core URLs and let's just add this to add, a, for example, blog, uh, yeah, blog admin. So let's just change the URL, see if we can access our admin area, our new admin area from a different URL. So we type in blog admin, a refresh, and you can see that it's actually working. So to show you that again. There we go. So we've used this custom URL and we can now access this blog admin with our custom URL. So as I was kind of drawing towards, we don't actually, we haven't actually disabled the admin area. That still is available. So if we just put the original path back in, for example, for the admin area and connect it to admin site URLs, Let's just go back into the normal admin area, which is just admin. And you can see that I'm additionally logged into that now, but obviously what you can't see are the models because I've not registered those models to this particular admin area. Of course, we can go ahead and register models also for this, this default Django administration area. So let's just go back and let's just close everything down. So if we go into the, for example, blog, because we have an admin file here. Now, if we were to just change this back. So remember we had admin site. So let's include the blog site and admin site. So we're going to register this model. So we're importing the models in. We're going to register the post model from our models that we created. We're going to register, register it both on the blog site and on the admin site now. So when we go back to the admin site, we refresh, you can see now we have the, the table available also on the Django administration default site. So you can see that the admin area and our blog area can work together or exist together. Um, so what about if we want to completely override the default admin site? So let's have a look at that. So if we go into the the settings of our core application. Uh, you can see we've got the settings files inside of here. We've got the installed apps. So by default, Django includes the Django Contrib admin app. 
So that's obviously linking us to the admin or the core or default admin area and all the different tools that we have and see in the admin area. So we can just simply override this and include our own admin area. So what we need to do, let's go over to uh, the project and let's go into apps here. Uh, what we need to do is just add a new class here. So let's just call that the blog admin, uh, the blog admin, I guess, config, we can call this. And then what we want to do is we want to bring in the admin config. So we need to kind of import that in. So we need to go into the contrib admin apps and then just bring that in the admin config so that we can think about overriding it. Uh, so let's just bring that in here. And now we can just um, define the default admin site. So now we can set up the default site. So default site, and that's going to equal. So we're going to need our, in this case, just navigate to our blog admin where we've set up a new admin uh, section for the blog. So we'll make this the default. So blog, and then go into the admin, referring to this uh, Pi file here. And then inside of that, we have a class and that class is called blog admin area. There we go. So that's going to be our new um, admin area, our default admin area. So now we've hooked that up, um, the, that will be available within our application. Uh, let's go over to the settings. Uh, because here, if you remember, we've got the installed apps, Django Contrib Admin, referring to the admin area, hooking us into the default admin area. So I guess what we want to do now is we want to replace this um, with our new admin area. So uh, that's going to be blog uh, dot apps. So we're going to refer to the apps um, folder here where we set up the, the default site. And then obviously what we're going to need is to access this class. So dot and then the name of the class. So blog admin config, and there we go. So we've now made the override. So let's just go back into, um, let's just uh, go back into our site again. Let's go to slash admin. And you can see here that by default, even though we've typed in admin, and let's remember that uh, in our URLs, admin was pointing to admin.site.urls and not the blog site. But now that we've made the override, you can see that instead of going to the default admin area, even though we're using the same admin.site.urls, it's now taken us actually to the blog because that's what we've kind of channeled our admin area to be. So we've made the override and now we're purely using the blog admin area as our default admin area. So maybe your project requires multiple admin sites. And I guess there's some benefits of that in a project here. For example, we've got blog and bookstore. So we can set up different users to access these different admin sites. And of course, the person that goes to or is, has access to the bookstore admin won't have access to the blog tables, etc. So this could add us add a little bit more security into our administration of our site. So let's go ahead now and just create uh, an additional admin area for our bookstore. So to start this off, I guess there's a few different options here. We can just continue uh, with this page here in our blog and set up our admin here. But of course, that's probably not ideal. So of course, in the bookstore, we can also add to the admin section here. So the flow here is exactly the same as the admin blog. In the admin bookstore, we ju we're just going to need to import admin, create a new class. In this case, it's going to be bookstore admin area instead of blog admin area. And then we create a site title or site header as before. And then what we need to do is make that accessible. So we create and uh, put it into this variable here. And then last of all, what we can do is add any post uh, model, sorry, to it. Obviously, we don't have any models yet in the bookstore, so we don't need that. Okay, so that's what we need to do here in the admin area. Now, if we go into the URLs, what we need to do now is just import them in. So instead of book uh, blog admin, we're going to now import the admin from bookstore. 
So we then uh, connect that to uh, this variable here, which we need to change to a lowercase to connect that up. And then finally, we then the path that we're going to need. So we've added a, a new path here, bookstore admin, and that's then connected to the bookstore site, which we've imported in. Okay, so now we have that in place, we can go ahead and access that. So here we're in the blog admin. So let's go to the bookstore admin. You can see that we're now in the bookstore admin. We've got the new title, but there aren't any models actually attached to this. So we can talk about model attachments in later tutorials. I uh, just wanted to show you how to set up different uh, multiple admin areas for different applications. Okay, so there we have it, setting up a custom admin area, overriding the default admin site and setting up multiple admin areas. There is, of course, many more features that we could have included in this tutorial. We probably could have lasted a, a couple of hours looking at this particular area. We will slowly feeding more items as we go along in this series. Next up, we're going to have a look at some of the optional fields and customizing lists and filters, adding kind of all that functionality or adding functionality within our admin area to better serve our models that we want to change and add data to.